Hey guys, it's your girl Sydney Renee and welcome back to the Unwind Rewind where I sit back and recap some of my favorite shows, which I'm sure are some of you guys' favorite shows as well. And with that being said, let's get into today's shows, which are Black Ink Crew, New York Season 9, Episode 15, and Black Ink Crew Compton, Season 2, Episode 5. Now, if you haven't caught up on the latest episode of Black Ink Crew New York and Black Ink Crew Compton, click out of this video because I'm about to spill the tea. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let's have a conversation down in the comment section below. And let's get into the video. All right, guys. So let's start this recap off with the OG Black Ink, which is Black Ink Crew New York. And we're going to start with Rock. Now we get introduced to two of Rock's brothers. Don't remember their names. Only thing I remember is the fact that they are low-key bums. Ain't neither one of them got a job, and they just living in Rock House. Like, what the hell is going on? And one of the brothers is older than him, and he ain't got nothing going on, like nothing at all. At least the younger brother, like, I ain't got no job, but I can still help you pay rent. The older brother sitting there drinking and smoking his little cigarette, like, he ain't got a can in the world, child. And I'm just like, okay, baby, please, like, what the hell is going on? And then they get into this conversation about their dad who died a few years ago. He was a single dad, and they just want to make him proud and rock. You making him proud. Your other brothers, I don't know. And, um, yeah, that was that. But then later on in the episode, Rock was supposed to go to a photo shoot, but his brother ends up getting into a six-car car accident, and he don't know if his brother is okay or not. Um, they didn't tell us. We got to wait till the next episode, but I hope he okay. We don't ever want to wish nothing like that on nobody, so... We gonna pray for him and hopefully his brother is okay. And yeah, man, that was that on that. Let's move on. Now on a lighter note, Ted is in the studio and he is listening to Crystal's song because y'all know he's trying to sign her and work with her and set up this video shoot and everything for her. So she finally gives him the song and he is listening to it. And Rock is still on this song. And when I tell y'all it was trash, like his verse was trash like rock uh stick to tattooing brother i'm sorry not sorry but that is not your calling rap is not what you should be doing okay and so ted called her like yo i thought when we was in atlanta i told you like he cannot be on this song like if you want to work with me he can't be on this song and she agrees and she's like okay i'm gonna tell him but later on in the episode when he asked her like okay did you tell him she still ain't tell him because she said she want to let him down gently girl he can't be on the song simple as t simple as fucking t anyway let's move on so last episode we found out that spider might have to have brain surgery because he has been going through a lot of pain and he went to the doctor had an mri so in this episode we're still waiting on those results and he still don't know what's going on so luckily we find out thank god that he does not have to have brain surgery they figured out what's going on with him um it's not that deep. It's nothing wrong with his brain. Thank God. And he got new pain medication. And the pain is bearable. So it is helping him. And you know what? All prayers to the man up above. Like for real. Because baby, I can only imagine that pain. I can only imagine it. So good for him. Good for his wife. Good, good, good. But let's get into this other stuff. Now, Tatina came to work mad and irritated at everybody for no reason. Ain't nobody did nothing to her. And she like, it's stinking here. It's a mess in here. And Puma like, okay, we can clean up. You doing too much. What's going on? And so he pulled her outside and he's like, talk to me because this ain't like you. And she ends up telling him a little bit about her case that's going on now. Her lawyer say that she got to be, you know, hush hush because they don't know what's going on. And she is on TV, right? And she gets into how she feel like a disappointment and she's crying. She's freaking out. And Puma gave her some real nigga advice. And he told her like, look, you putting yourself in these situations. You putting yourself in these predicaments. Like, what are you doing? Because this is not the first time you've been down this road. So you need to get your shit together. You need to get it in order and you need to get it together fast. 
And baby, that's some truth for your ass, okay? Because you can't just be blaming everybody. It's happening to me. Why is this girl? Look, baby, you a grown ass woman at the end of the day and you make your own decisions. Learn from them. Learn from them, okay? But let's get into this situation with Caesar because this right here pissed me off. Okay, it pissed me off. So let's get into it. Now, this episode, we got a blast from the past with our girl, Sassy. Hey, Sassy. Do y'all remember Sassy? She is a part of the original, the OG Black and Crew. Y'all know from season one. She popped up this episode because she is helping Caesar with an idea that he has. Now, y'all remember Caesar used to do the Black Ink magazine? Well, now he wants to do like a Black Ink billboard, right? He want to showcase black art. Black Ink is beautiful, right? And so he called her for her help because that's like her field. That's like her lane, right? And so everything is good, and she called her people that she worked with to come meet Caesar and his people to get ideas. And Caesar is not in the mood. And he being low key rude. He don't, I ain't got no ideas. I don't know. That's what they here for. They the professionals. Let them handle it. Like he is in the mood. And we like, okay, Caesar, what the hell going on with you? Okay. Now come to find out, Caesar had a lot on his mind because he had had a court date like the day before. So he wasn't in the mood because, baby, the court date went horrible. So Ted, like, okay, something not right. So he pull up on Caesar, and Caesar, like, look, I apologize for being MIA. But when he went to court, he found out that the little press conference that he had a couple episodes back violated a restraining order that Crystal had on him. And now she's getting bullied online, and it's his fault. And even though no abuse was found on his daughter so they could not prove that case they put a permanent a permanent restraining order on him you know so he can't be in contact with his daughter nobody can reach out to her for him and it is permanent until crystal his baby mama his bitter ass baby mama say so like are you serious and caesar is just emotional as hell because he like i lost my child like this my only child this is my heir he has nothing he don't have family he hurting like he is hurting and ted is like i can't be the bridge anymore boy you weren't never trying to be no damn bridge one never trying to be no bridge okay and caesar's like you know i should have spent more time with her and how he feels so alone and then he says that his girlfriend suzette is not supportive like he feels like she should know that something is wrong right and so caesar has set up a photo shoot with sassy so they can do the billboard and he can't go because he just in his feelings he is too distraught and so ted calls puma and let him know like you know caesar not coming he got A and B going on. And Caesar wrapped up the... Not Caesar. Caesar is not there. Puma wrapped up the photo shoot. I was like, you know what? We're going to pray for Caesar because this is just... This is just too much. Like, a permanent restraining order into his bitter ass baby mama say so. Like, tuh, baby, remind me. This was my reminder not to move to New York, okay? Because what type of laws y'all got? Like, what happened until she was 18? Like, what happened to that? Because when she 18, she could make her own decisions. But y'all talking about until her mama say so. Child, that's going to be a grown-ass woman in a couple more years, Caesar. Just hold on, baby. Just hold on. But that was that on Black Ink Crew New York. Now, let's get into Black Ink Crew content. Now, Lemire was working on one of his food trucks, the college boy, food truck and he ends up setting himself on fire now his face was burned up a little bit but nothing a little cocoa butter and some water and a little rest won't fix he is okay thank god our dude is okay we don't wish none of this type of shit on nobody and we still like lemire you know he ain't a part of i am no more but we still fuck with lemire so Thank God that the boy is good, the boy is okay, and he back and he better than ever, okay? Now, on the other hand, KP ain't doing too good, okay? Because he failed the health inspection. 
Now, we already got this city ordinance to deal with before the shop can open. And now you know, failed the health inspection. And it's not like the shop is dirty, okay? He just can't have this. He can't have that. This is going to be in a way. This is a hazard. You know, shit like that. You know, health inspection type of shit. And he is starting to lose hope. He is down himself. He don't want to tell his crew because he feel like they don't believe in him as is. And that's just going to put more doubt in them about him. And then we find out that Tim was faking with Star when she apologized. And he felt like she should have apologized to him outside of the cameras and outside of everybody. And I honestly, I feel him because it's like when you at a party or you're in front of a lot of people and somebody come and be like, I apologize. I'm sorry. You do feel kind of pressure to be like, okay, because you don't want to look like a bitter baddie, right? And so he like, yeah, but I'm still not good. Like, she could have handled that a different way, right? Okay. So she ended up texting him while they was out donating to the community. And she like, we need to talk, right? And so she pulled up on them where they was. And she like, I still think that they feel some type of way. And they do. And so she apologizes to Tim again. And she was like, you know, I just been real stressed out. It's a lot on my plate. She just got her mom, um, her grandma, sorry, from the nursing home. And her grandmother has Alzheimer's. And she's taking care of her. So she's stressed out. So all those times that she was leaving the shop, she had real shit going on. And I was like, you know what? I apologize, Star. I apologize because, you know, sometimes we talk too much and we talk shit and we don't know what we're talking about. So I can admit when I'm wrong. Okay, forgive me. And Tim forgave her as well for real this time. Okay, he forgave her for real this time because he didn't know everything that was going on. And she dealing with real life stuff. And you know what? I apologize, okay? So, later on in the episode, we finally get this city ordinance thing situated, okay? And it was just all miscommunication. And we got a new health inspection coming up next week, okay? Why well, I'm saying we, like I'm a part of the shop, okay? Anyway, we got a new health inspection coming up next week. And all I know is KP better get this damn shop open because, baby, it's episode five. And we ain't seen y'all do attack two yet. Not a real one on silicone, but like, come on, like, ain't this black ink? What we doing? Child, what we doing? So, anyway, now, Star comes to the shop because she ready to start booking appointments. And she don't know everything that's going on because they not keeping her in the loop because they don't really trust her like that, okay? And they find out that she been kicking it with Barbie and them. And they like, oh, you kicking it with the ops? Like, what? You can't be telling them our business. You know what I'm saying? Like, Barbie going to use you and try to get in your head and try to use you against her. And Tim, like, girl, that ain't loyal, right? And so they were like, you got to pick a side. And she chose them, of course. And I was like, you know, this is like some high school shit. Like, that girl can hang with who she want to hang with, kick it with who she want to kick it with. Like, y'all don't trust her. Just say that. Because at the end of the day, just because you don't get along with somebody don't mean that sis can't get along with them. So I was like, okay, I see y'all trying to change, but don't revert back to y'all old ways because y'all doing good right now. If she want to be friends with Barbie, let her be friends with Barbie. But at the same time, I do understand what they saying and I'm going to explain why I understand what they saying when they say that Barbie is trying to use her. Okay, so stay tuned for that because I'm finna get into it right now. So y'all ain't gotta wait much longer. Now, Barbie and Dayelle are having a pop-up shop together to promote their clothing line. And they're also going to have other businesses there to, you know, put their name out there and whatever. And we're like, okay, cool. Now, later on in the episode, Barbie invited Danielle and the other girls out to a dance class to get Danielle out of the house after everything that happened with Lamir, right? And Danielle is like, oh, I'm just so glad I got these girls and we are friends. Like, I don't know what I would do without them. And so they invite the other girls. So Alana, Voodoo, Nessie, and Star to the pop-up. And they're like, y'all can be a part of it as well because I know y'all do art, right? And then they tell her, Nessie, Ken is going to be there. He got a booth too. So Nessie like, okay, I don't care i'm gonna ignore him i'm coming to support y'all right and somehow some way every conversation that barbie and danielle have with these girls that work at i am the conversation always turns into 
something about I am. Why are y'all constantly asking them about what's going on with I am? This is what KP and Tim are talking about. They digging, right? And so they take this opportunity because they're like, oh, it's still not open yet, but it's going to be open in a minute. Oh, well, Lemire is opening up a tattoo shop and I'm going to be right there by his side. Yep. We looking for builders now and we're going to run a real tattoo shop, a professional tattoo shop where people can actually grow. You know what I'm saying? Like y'all just throwing shade, just throwing shade. Like girl for what? Like you don't work that no more and you so over it and you so grown. Why are you still talking about it? Okay. So anyway, let's get into this pop-up shop because... We at this pop-up shop, Nessie there, her ex Ken is there across from her and Barbie like, oh, I tried to keep y'all apart from each other, but you put them right across from each other. Like he look up, he see her, she look up, she see him. So what do you mean by apart? Because baby, her in the front, him in the back, him in the back, her in the front is apart, not across from each other. But anyway, that was apart for her. And after everything that Nessie has told you that's happened with her and this boy, if you her real friend, why would you then encourage her to go and have a conversation with you? And she's telling you she's not ready to do that. She's telling you she's not ready to do that. She still got to do some healing. And that's not something that she wants to do. So why are you trying to encourage that? Barbie is very messy. I see it. KP see it. Tim see it. The girl is messy. And I hate a bitch that try to be like, messy oh i'm so women empowerment i'm all about growth and love and positivity but you do shit like this why would you want that to happen especially at your pop-up event why would you want this conversation to take place when you know that nothing good is going to come from it so ken approaches nessie to talk out of the blue right and she's not feeling it she's like boy what do you want what do you want? So now we get into all of, first of all, y'all, they broke up over a damn smoothie. Okay. Nancy said that she was going to run errands. She was going to Target and he was sitting there making a goddamn spoon smoothie and that pissed her off. And so they start arguing and they got mad and he said, well, she called him a bitch while they was arguing. And that was the final straw for him. And baby, a smoothie child. What kind of smoothie was it? Let me know. Was it 5-5? Five, five? Because then I might understand. But a smoothie, like, come on. And Nessie get into how he is faking. He is not this good guy that he tried to uh, portray. Like, when they broke up, he said he wanted his money back. That he All the money he ever gave her. He, cheat on, uh, he cheated on her. He was controlling her. Nobody could tell her that she was pretty. All this other shit. And I was like, oh. So, he a little Ike Turner. And he was like, I'm not emotionally attached to you. I'm not emotional, uh, uh, emotionally attached to this situation anymore. And blah, blah, blah. Now, Nessie leaves because she like, boy, you a bitch, bye. And Barbie runs after her. Oh, are you okay? I didn't think that conversation was going to go like that. Why wouldn't you think the conversation was going to go like that after she said that she didn't want to have a conversation with him? What other way was it going to go? Barbie messy as hell and I just I can't with her but anyway y'all that was that on that okay that was it for Black and Crew New York and Black and Crew Compton now I will be back next week to do a recap to episode 16 in episode 6 so y'all come back for that but in the meantime between time y'all can watch my other videos that I do for my other shows okay and uh like comment subscribe let's have a conversation down in the comment section below and it's your girl Cindy Renee and I am out of here y'all peace